The MKB-53 was a high-yield bunker buster thermonuclear weapon developed by the United States during the Cold War. Deployed on strategic air command bombers, the B-53, with a yield of 9 megatons, was the most powerful weapon in the U.S. nuclear arsenal after the last B-41 nuclear bombs were retired in 1976. The B-53 was the basis of the W-53 warhead carried by the Titan II missile, which was decommissioned in 1987. Although not in active service for many years before 2010, 50 B-53s were retained during that time as part of the hedge portion of the enduring stockpile until its complete dismantling in 2011. The last B-53 was disassembled on October 25, 2011, a year ahead of schedule. With its retirement, the largest bomb currently in service in the U.S. nuclear arsenal is the B-83 with a maximum yield of 1.2 megatons. The B-53 was replaced in the bunker-busting role by a variant of the two-stage B-61 nuclear bomb. History Development of the weapon began in 1955 by Los Alamos National Laboratory, based on the earlier Mk-21 and Mk-46 weapons. In March 1958 the Strategic Air Command issued a request for a new Class C bomb to replace the earlier Mk-41. A revised version of the MK-46 became the TX-53 in 1959. The development TX-53 warhead was apparently never tested, although an experimental TX-46 predecessor design was detonated June 28, 1958 as hardtack oak, which detonated at a yield of 8.9 megatons. The MK-53 entered production in 1962 and was built through June 1965. About 340 bombs were built. It entered service aboard B-47 Strater Jet, B-52G Stratofortress, and B-58 Hustler bomber aircraft in the mid-1960s. From 1968 it was redesignated B-53. Some early versions of the bomb were dismantled beginning in 1967. About 50 bomb and 54 Titan warhead versions were in service through 1980. After the Titan II program ended, the remaining W-53s were retired in the late 1980s. The B-53 was also intended to be retired in the 1980s, but 50 units remained in the active stockpile until the deployment of the B-61-11 in 1997. At that point the obsolete B-53s were slated for immediate disassembly. However, the process of disassembling the units was greatly hampered by safety concerns as well as a lack of resources. In 2010 authorization was given to disassemble the 50 bombs at the Pantex plant in Texas. The process of dismantling the last remaining B-53 bomb in the stockpile commenced on October 25, 2011 and was completed soon afterwards. Specifications, the B-53 was 12 feet 4 inches long with a diameter of 50 inches. It weighed 8,850 pounds, including the 800 to 900 pounds parachute system and the honeycomb aluminum nose cone to enable the bomb to survive laydown delivery. It had five parachutes, one 5-foot pilot chute, one 16-foot extractor chute, and three 48-foot main chutes. Chute deployment depends on delivery mode, with the main chutes used only for laydown delivery. For free fall delivery, the entire system was jettisoned. The warhead of the B-53 used a alloy instead of plutonium for fission, with a mix of lithium-6 deuteride fuel for fusion. The explosive lens comprised a mixture of RDX and TNT, which was not insensitive. Two variants were made, the B-53Y1, a dirty weapon using a U-238 in case secondary, and the B-53Y2 clean version with a non-fissile secondary casing. Explosive yield was approximately 9 megatons. Role, it was intended as a bunker buster weapon, using a surface blast after laydown deployment to transmit a shock wave through the earth to collapse its target. Attacks against the Soviet deep underground leadership shelters in the Shekhov Cherepovo area south of Moscow envisaged multiple B-53 per Watt 53 exploding at ground level. It has since been supplanted in such roles by the Earth Penetrating B61 Mod 11, a bomb that penetrates the surface to deliver much more of its explosive energy into the ground, and therefore needs a much smaller yield to produce the same effects. 
the B-53 was intended to be retired in the 1980s, but 50 units remained in the active stockpile until the deployment of the B-61-11 in 1997. At that point the obsolete B-53S was slated for immediate disassembly. However, the process of disassembling the units was greatly hampered by safety concerns as well as a lack of resources. The last remaining B-53 bomb began the disassembly processes on Tuesday 25 October 2011 at the Energy Department the Euro unregistered trademark S Pantex plant. An April 2014 GAO report notes that the NNSA is retaining canned subassemblies associated with a certain warhead indicated as excess in the 2012 production and planning directive are being retained in an indeterminate state pending a senior level government evaluation of their use in planetary defense against Earth bound asteroids. In its FY 2015 budget request, the NNSA noted that the B 53 component disassembly was delayed leading some observers to conclude they might be the warhead CSAs being retained for potential planetary defense purposes. W-53 The W-53 warhead of the Titan II ICBM used the same physics package as the B-53, without the airdrop specific components like the parachute system, reducing its mass to about 6,200 pounds. The 8,140-pound Mark VI re-entry vehicle containing the W-53 warhead was about 123 inches long, 7.5 feet in diameter and was mounted atop a spacer which was 8.3 feet in diameter at the missile interface. With a yield of 9 megatons, it was the highest yield warhead ever deployed on a U.S. missile. About 65 W-53 warheads were constructed between December 1962 and December 1963. On September 19, 1980 a fuel leak caused a Titan II to explode within its silo in Arkansas, throwing the W-53 warheads some distance away. Due to the safety measures built into the weapon, it did not explode or release any radioactive material. 52 active missiles were deployed in silos prior to the beginning of the retirement program in October 1982. With the retirement of the Titan fleet, disassembly of the W-53 warheads was completed by about 1988. Effects Assuming a detonation at optimum height, a 9 megaton blast would result in a fireball with an approximate 2.9 to 3.4 miles diameter. The radiated heat would be sufficient to cause lethal burns to any unprotected person within a 20-mile radius. Blast effects would be sufficient to collapse most residential and industrial structures within a 9-mile radius. Within 3.65 miles virtually all above-ground structures would be destroyed and blast effects would inflict near 100% fatalities. Within 2.25 miles a 500 rem dose of ionizing radiation would be received by the average person, sufficient to cause a 50% to 90% casualty rate independent of thermal or blast effects at this distance. Artifacts B-53 on display in the free introduction exhibit room at the Atomic Testing Museum, Las Vegas, Nevada, B-53 on display at the wings over the Rockies Air and Space Museum, Denver, Colorado. Mark 53 casing is on display in the Cold War Gallery at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, B-53 casing in display yard of the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History, Albuquerque, New Mexico. References, Notes, Bibliography, External links, The B-53 Bomb.